Hello everyone, how's it going? This is a review of chapter 1128 of One Piece. This week as well, we have a really great chapter of One Piece. Just like the last chapter, we once again get an entire chapter where it's just us getting to enjoy the straw hats getting into various hijinks without any interruptions or cutaways. I already said this in the review of the last chapter, but these kinds of chapters have always been my favorite chapters in the series. And it has been a long time since we have had them, but now we get them two weeks in a row. So I am really happy. But before we get into the review, I would appreciate if you could like and subscribe. Thank you very much. And now without further ado, let us get right into the chapter. But before we can get into the chapter, I would normally be talking about the cover story right now. But of course, this week instead of the cover story, we get a double page color spread. And I must say, I really like this color spread. Oda kicks off spooky season by giving us a wizards slash Halloween themed color spread for the first chapter of October. I really like everything about this color spread. Whether it be Luffy flying in a Superman pose with a broomstick, Robin looking at Luffy doing his thing while wearing glasses. A really underrated look might I add. It brings back memories of her outfit in the beginning of the Strong World movie. I also remember being irrationally upset when she ditched the glasses midway through the movie. We have Usopp hanging on for dear life and presumably screaming at Sanji to help him. But of course, Sanji is completely distracted admiring Robin with her glasses. And who can blame him really? We have Zoro and Jinbei just chilling on top of this massive dragon. And the dragon seems to be looking over at Luffy's antics. Or maybe he's actually also looking at Robin with her glasses. Moving on, we have Brook and Chopper who somehow managed to completely flip their broom and are now pretty much in free fall, screaming in terror. Or at least Chopper is screaming in terror. Brook seems to be enjoying himself if you look at his face closely. We also have Nami and Frankie riding on a motorcycle style broom, giving real big bro and Lil Sis energy. Honestly, this is probably my favorite part of the spread. Well, aside from you know, but a tigress. All in all, this is a really great color spread for Mord. Now, we should probably get into the actual chapter. And immediately, we get one of the funniest opening panels we have had for a One Piece chapter in recent memory, or maybe even ever. With Sanji remarking that the current events that are unfolding can't possibly be a dream because there are too many men around for that to be the case. With Nami questioning what kind of dreams Sanji normally has. Although Nami is probably better off not knowing the answer to that question to be honest. Moving on, we have Sanji jumping off the castle while carrying Nami who tells him to be careful since the castle is crumbling. And while that's happening, Zoro is explaining to Usopp that he woke up on the other side of the town. But he heard a voice and when he followed that voice he found Luffy who was beating up the ear god. In this scene, we also have Luffy telling Usopp that he should have been able to beat that giant cat from last week. Which is true, because if Usopp had used any of his pop greens, then that cat would have been light work. But according to Usopp, he panicked because he was already being eaten by that cat when he woke up. Which is honestly fair enough, because personally, I would probably also be freaking out if I woke up and found myself in a giant cat's mouth. Moving on, the gang find themselves in some sort of castle town made of Lego bricks. With Usopp pointing out that they are wearing clothes that are similar to what the giants of Elbaf are always wearing. This causes Nami to wonder if they had become gigantified. But she she does note that the structures around them are clearly fake. Also, since they don't know where they are, Zoro suggests that they should head into the town and talk to one of the locals to see if they can't find something out. Sanji also points out that the other members of the Straw Hats are probably not all there either since he can't smell Robin. Anyway, they head off towards the town on an adventure. But on their way there, they end up running into an old man riding a really cool looking grasshopper for some reason. Of course, Nami and Sanji don't like bugs, so they try to get as far away from the grasshopper as possible. Meanwhile, Luffy asks the old man some questions about their current situation. The old man says that he is in a bit of a rush, so he can't talk for long. But he does give them some useful information, such as the fact that the land they are on belongs to the sun god. So apparently it's Luffy's land. Never mind. This appears to be a different sun god, or maybe even an imposter. Of course, Luffy and the others don't know that Luffy is the real sun god though, so they just go along with it. The old man also mentions that the giant cat from the last chapter is apparently also an important figure, similar to the year god. And of course, Luffy being Luffy, he almost tells the old man that they beat up said important figure. But thankfully, Usopp stops him. Now, this is probably my favorite part of the chapter, where we have the straw hats trying to pretend that they have nothing to do with all the various incidents that the old man is talking about. And of course, they do it in the least suspicious way possible, looking away, pretending to whistle while also sweating bullets. They are indeed masters in the art of stealth. After that, the old man warns them to not follow the road that they are currently
apparently on, because it leads to a place guarded by vicious soldiers that no one returns alive for. And of course, as you would expect, Luffy wants to go to that place as soon as he possibly can, leaving before Nami can even stop the old man from phrasing his warning in such a way. The rest of the Straw Hats follow after him, with Usopp thanking the old man and Nami apologizing to the old man before leaving. The old man appears to like her apology. I can't blame him, to be honest. Also, Zoro seems to be just as excited as Luffy about the vicious soldiers, as you would expect, with Sanji calling out Zoro for enabling Luffy. Luffy is, is excited about the scent of an adventure, but while they are running, they spot another castle that looks exactly the same as the one from earlier. With Luffy noticing that there seems to be some other figure dressed in Elbaf clothes running towards them, he decides to just dodge them, but he finds out that he can't dodge because in fact the other figure was his own reflection. Because as we find out, the town that the Straw Hats are currently in is actually inside a glass cage of some kind. The Straw Hats find themselves inside a massive, giant-sized cabin, where they also find Chopper tied up. So now we know where he has been until now. They discover that there are human-sized clothes here, apparently made by the Sun God, similar to clothes for dolls. Sanji points out that the reason the rabbit from earlier had a nasty smell when they roasted it was because of the plastic residue on its body from the Lego pieces. This probably also explains why Luffy said in the previous chapter that he didn't want to eat the cat after having eaten the rabbit, since even though Luffy will pretty much eat anything, burnt plastic is too much even for him. Sanji also points out that the edges of the cage they were in were made of one-way mirrors. Sanji also then tries to take the next shift cleaning the women's cabin and, for obvious reasons, Nami stops him. Meanwhile, they are all trying to figure out if they are already in Elba or not. They are discussing their next move when all of a sudden, they are attacked by a group of some giant animals, a snake a raven and three mice. Presumably, these are the vicious soldiers that the old man from earlier was talking about. While the Straw Hats are fighting the vicious soldiers, the Sun God returns to his cabin, and they seem to be shocked and confused by all the commotion coming from the cabin. It should be noted that this person is covered from head to toe, so we don't know what they look like or even their gender. They seem to be wearing a similar mask to what can be seen on the doors of the houses in Elba. The Sun God enters the room to find that the whole thing is a mess, and it's all also on fire. They also refer to the room as their sacred temple. Meanwhile, Luffy takes out the giant snake using Dawn Piston. We also find out that its name is apparently Hilmungard. Usopp points out that the Sun God seems to be particularly huge, even for a giant. While they are running away from the Sun God, they run into the big cat from the last chapter and decide to hitch a ride on it. Also, Nami, also Nami stole a map from the cabin earlier, and now they know the direction that they need to go in order to escape. Meanwhile, the Sun God looks to be extremely angry about them bringing ruin to their kingdom, and it also seems as if the residents of the caged town have actually seen the Sun God in person before. All in all, this was a great chapter of One Piece. It seems like, at least for now, Oda has decided to revert back to the style of storytelling he was using pre-timeskip, where he just sticks to a single perspective throughout the chapter, instead of constantly cutting away to different locations. And I for one am really glad that he did this, because I feel like it's a good change of pace. And if he decides to use this style throughout Elbaf, then I think that would be a great way to differentiate this arc from all the other arcs in the post-timeskip era of One Piece, and make it feel like a special arc, just like what a lot of fans have been expecting Elbaf to be. Also. I guess after this chapter, we can put the hallucination theory to rest. Looks like the various inconsistencies that people were bringing up from the last chapter were just genuine mistakes on Oda's part, which is understandable because at the end of the day, he is just a human like the rest of us. Allegedly, anyway. Before I end the review, I should also bring up the fact that we apparently have an imposter sun god now. Which is interesting because at least the giant warrior pirates seem to recognize Luffy as the sun god Nika. So that makes me wonder if they know about this other sun god. Is this another sun god or just somebody role playing as one as a hobby? It's really interesting to think about. Anyway, this was a really great chapter and I am looking forward to what happens in the next chapter. So I will see you then. Thank you for watching and make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Bye bye.